Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. It just finished dumping and it is going to probably be dumping again in a few minutes. It is a rainy, rainy day here in May in Portland, Oregon. Now, I moved here to the Pacific Northwest 18 and a half years ago and folks warned me that I would struggle because it's gray and rainy and muddy nine months out of the year. I was told I'd have seasonal depression and I would want to flee to Hawaii or Mexico and um, get away in the winter months to escape the gray dreariness. I found I've adapted really well. I love everything about the climate here. I love the gray and the rain. I work outside no matter the weather. I don't mind working in rainy weather. That's what rain gear is for. That's what wellies are for. One of the few things I don't like about this climate is that the consistent rainy weather for much of the year lets slugs and snails proliferate and they are a huge pressure in my garden. Not snails so much. I really don't have snails, but slugs are a big pressure in my garden. So I thought I'd talk really quickly before the next downpour hits what I do to manage slugs in my garden. So there are four main ways that I handle slugs in my garden. Now there's one way that is effective for some folks, but I choose not to use it. And that is beer. I typically stroll my garden at least twice a day, even if I don't have active garden projects going on. And I just check in with my garden and see how things are going. Oftentimes on the weekend, on an evening where it's lovely out like this, I might have an adult beverage with me. I'm going to enjoy drinking that and not spend it on slugs. Beer traps can work for some folks. Slugs are attracted to beer. However, I found if it rains heavily, they get diluted. Yes, you can cover them with a little plank or something, or your dogs may go for them. There's lots of reasons that I just feel like, eh, the yield of how many slugs I catch for the amount of effort and the amount of beer that I have to use. For me, it's not been great, but that doesn't mean I'm discouraging that method for you all. May be a great method for you, but it's not one of the four that I use. Before we dive into these four methods, let's talk quickly about a couple methods that don't work at all and you should not waste your time. Number one, copper. I don't care how many people are saying that they love copper and it works great. You can just Google it if you really want to look at all of the countless videos on the internet. Slugs can cross a copper barrier. It's not going to be something where they touch it and they get sapped and they bounce back or whatever everybody says. Slugs can cross a copper barrier. It's expensive to put it in your garden. It's labor intensive to install a line of copper wire or tape or pennies or what have you. Not worth it. Don't bother. The second one that I would not recommend even bothering to waste your time on because permaculture is about effective solutions. It's not about garden myths that we hope work. It's not about bad advice given on YouTube for video clicks. It's about things that actually really work. Forgive my snark, it's the Roush beer. If we use the eggshells in the garden as a slug deterrent thinking, oh gosh, slugs are gonna cut themselves and so they won't cross over those eggshells. That is absolute hooey. Terrestrial mollusks produce a thick coating of protective slime all over their foot. Their belly is called their foot. And you are not going to cut them with eggshells. They can easily navigate along broken glass along the edge of a sharpened knife, that slime is very protective. And that is how they um, maneuver around the landscape and protect their foot. Eggshells don't work. Eggshells are great calcium rich fertilizer, crush them, put them back in your garden or feed them back to your chickens if you want to as a calcium supplement. Don't bother using them as a slug deterrent. You will be um, frustrated at how poorly they work. So the third thing that doesn't work very well is the commercial slug baits, especially the ones that say that they are acceptable to use around pets. These products need to be kept dry and they don't work in a really rainy climate. So you sprinkle them around the plants that you don't want eaten. You then remove all of the slugs inside the ring of sluggo that you have created. And hopefully the slugs now can't, can't get into your plants because they're gonna go for the slug bait and boom, that's the end of it but you have to reapply every time it rains and sluggo is really expensive. There is no way in my quarter acre permaculture garden that I could use slug bait. Even if I felt that it was in line with my ethics and my design principles, it would be cost prohibitive. So that's not gonna work for me. The things that have worked really well are number one, and this is gonna be one that is only able to be implemented by a small percentage of folks. So I don't want this to sound like it is the solution, ducks. The common saying in permaculture is you don't have a slug problem, you have a lack of ducks problem. 
Slugs can be utilized as a resource. They are an excellent food for ducks. Ducks will go for the slugs that chickens will pass up as too big and too slimy and too yuck. Ducks will eat them all and they will turn them into eggs. So if you can keep ducks, I really recommend them, especially in our climate here. If you live in a sluggy climate, keep ducks because they are so good at going through and picking all of the slugs and slug eggs. They love the eggs. They go in and they bill in under the vegetation and under the mulch and they get all the slugs and slug eggs. And again, they turn them into up to 300 eggs per year per duck. I know most people cannot keep ducks, so that is not a solution for everybody, but for me, it has been highly effective. The second thing that I do is that I use the hair from my dogs as a slug deterrent. Yep, it works great. You can check out my video on how I use my poodle's hair as a resource in the garden. Remember how I talked about how slugs have a thick coating of slime that will protect them from sharp edges? Guess what they don't like getting stuck all over their mucus that they produce? Dog hair. So you can put down wool as well. And I've found that if I ring a baby pumpkin, because my pumpkins are coming up right around the time that we still have slug pressure and they will strip a pumpkin very quickly. That's it, they'll remove the cotyledons and the first set of leaves and that pumpkin is toast. So I plant my pumpkin, I ring it with dog hair, leaving no gaps. And then I make sure that I have picked all the slugs from inside the ring. And I have found that the slugs do not want to cross that. There's lots of other things in my garden that they can happily eat that they will go for that do not require them crossing a barrier of dog hair. Wool, again, you can use as well. Bonus, when your dog hair or your wool decomposes in the garden, it is nitrogen rich and is a great fertilizer. Pumpkins are hungry for nitrogen. And so you have a great stacking of functions there. Slug deterrent, fertilizer, all in one. Also using a waste resource, dog clippings, waste resource. Okay, so you can't keep ducks. You don't have poodles or other breeds that require regular haircuts. What can you do to deal with the slug pressure in your garden? So before I got ducks, what I found really was very, very helpful in reducing the load of slugs in my garden, of reducing the population significantly, was I would get my mug of coffee and I would make a round of the garden every morning, as I still do, but I would take the time to bend over and flip over leaves and pick the slugs off around the base of plants and the bottom of the leaves. I would keep a little bucket and you can either put a little bit of soapy water, a little bit of vinegar water, or just an empty bucket if you have something you can feed your slugs to, like ducks. At the time I didn't, so I would just put a little bit of um, vinegar water and I would just chuck the slugs in a bucket. I would just walk around and pick them, the little tiny ones that are like a third the size of your pinky nail, all the way up to the big mama slugs. And doing that every morning in March and April and moving into May a little bit, I found that I reduced the overall population of slugs in the garden enough that my green beans were safe, my zucchinis were safe, and my kale was not quite so chewed looking. And that got the population down enough that by the time the hot sunny weather came, partway into June that I was doing okay and my plants had gotten a good strong footing and were able to get tall enough and out of reach of the slugs enough and big and vibrant enough that slugs were not going to kill them. So going every morning, making the rounds, flipping over the leaves of your plants, looking on the bottom side, looking around the base of the leaves and picking all those slugs by hand and putting them in a bucket. I know it's gross. There's the heebie-jeebie factor. They're slimy. You get used to it after a while. You can acclimate, you can adapt. I promise you, you can handle slugs. Once you handle 20 or 30 of them, you're like, this is no big deal. I'll pick them up and chuck them in a bucket. The last thing, I'm gonna go over here, put my drink down and get the last thing for you guys. So since I have ducks, I no longer need to go slug pick in the morning. But my front yard is a part of my garden where my ducks don't have access to the plants and they can't really uh, reduce the slug population sufficiently. So in the front yard, I still use cardboard. This is such a great cheap way to deal with your slugs. If it is cool and rainy, and you know that you might have some sun coming in the forecast, lay the cardboard out in your garden. This is just crap from my recycle bin. Lay it out in your garden. Slugs love cardboard. Slugs do not like sunny weather. They don't like dry places. And when the sun comes out and the weather starts to dry out a little bit, they will flee to anywhere that is moist and shaded where they can hide. Cardboard absorbs water great. So if it's rainy, put it out, let it get rained on, let it get soaked. And it will 
hold the moisture and retain it. And then it obviously provides shade. And you can go out in the mornings after there's been a couple of hours of sunlight, flip these puppies over and they will be coated in slugs. And for me, I can pick those slugs off and feed them to my ducks, but you can skish them. Or you can again throw them in a bucket of that soapy or vinegar water to dispose of them. This is the easiest and best and cheapest way I have found to trap slugs. I think it works better than a beard trap. It is something that can go in the compost when you are done with it. It is free. It doesn't cost you any money. And the slugs are highly attracted to it. So you're taking a waste out of the recycle bin and you are turning it into a valuable tool in your garden and you can reduce the pressure in your garden substantially if you do this every morning, especially if you let it sit out in the sunshine for a couple of hours and then come back, flip it over, pick all of those slugs off the bottom. Using slugs as a resource, ducks turn them into eggs. Using deterrents like dog hair. Using some human power and ingenuity, hand picking and cardboard slug traps. And I have found that I have gotten my slug population down enough that my plants that are really, really prone to slug predation can make it through the spring. Our goal here is not to get rid of all the slugs in our garden. Slugs are really valuable food for spiders, those beneficial garden spiders, for garter snakes, for all, all kinds of amphibians. Slugs are really important. I don't want to get rid of all my slugs. I don't want to poison my slugs. I want to create habitat and food sources for wildlife, but I want to get the population down enough that I can still grow food. So I want to protect those tender vegetables. I don't want to poison my garden. I don't want to strip all of the slugs out of my garden. I want to have a happy medium. Permaculture is about balance. I want to strike that balance. And for me, those are four key ways that I have found I can strike balance in my garden. I can reach a happy medium when my garden thrives, I get a yield of produce and I still have food for wildlife in the form of a reduced slug population. Thanks for watching today. Check out my Patreon down in the description and I will be back tomorrow. Thanks.